Hi, I'm Luyolo from South Africa. I'm here with this group of wonderful people here in Madrid at the World Dignity Conference 2024. And yeah, we've been having a discussion about different themes and one of those that uh, came up and that's important to my work is around uh, dignity and economic development and how uh, shared emo uh, emotional experiences um, have a bearing on developmental outcomes and one something that's come out of that is um, a discussion on the role of uh, enterprises and uh, how their uh, pursuit of profit um, is destructive and humiliating. And you were sharing something about that just now. Yes, so I'm Craig Tuck. Um, I'm head of Law Aid International, which is a network of lawyers, uh, specialist lawyers working in criminal justice and advising NGOs. Uh, and other experts that are involved in that criminal justice space. So part of what we do uh, is involved in strategic litigation or public interest litigation, advising NGOs and other groups that are interested in creating change uh, and as part of that um, bringing some of the expertise and special uh, knowledge, if you like, to processes that might assist in the change process and working um, in supply chains and that sort of thing. Uh, and we were talking before a little bit about the alchemy of law mm. where uh, philosophy and jurisprudence uh, and ideas uh, then can, become, can manifest in, in strategy, in creating law in uh, bringing uh, companies and governments and individuals to account uh, and the primary way really to do that is with transparency so that you can access information formally using processes to um, bring power to people that are trying to uh, understand what's happened to them, uh, to move their group initiatives and vision and purpose forward uh, by bringing um, so, some real horsepower to the table through legal processes. So often uh, in the work that I do we work across jurisdictions, that means we work in different countries with different uh, lawyers and different um, specialists and experts because there would be multiple um, parties involved, that might be security services, police. Uh, often there's companies in the background uh, and government agencies. So we are, um, if you like, and following on from our discussion this morning, um, making the substance of what is going on clear, but also clarifying the process. So it's the substance and process that we focus on. Um, and to me, the concept of human dignity um, should be front and centre of the legal system, certainly front and centre of criminal justice systems, uh, and it's not. Uh, it might be talked about, it might be uh, discussed at length, uh, but there are some realities within those systems that uh, could well do with um, being refocused and brought around to concepts and elements of human dignity. Yeah. Um, so, something you mentioned in our discussion was. Um, the, the relationship between transparency and privacy. That's uh, interesting. So, uh, one of the ways I. Uh, That's a bit loud. Ah, okay, I'll speak a bit loud. So, uh, one of the ways I like to think about dignity is also in terms of what it's not. Um, I think w with, a, with a topic like dignity or like development, uh, it's, it's difficult to give a one word definition for it. M many people have different definitions. But uh, a, a way to bring greater clarity to it is also in um, talking about what it's not. So with the idea of transparency, without transparency um, in the work you do and as relates to the issue of dignity, um, 
what what do we lose? Right. So uh, privacy and transparency uh, sort of on a continuum. And if we, if we look at um, uh, the context, often with a transparent process, it's linked very closely to fair trial, uh, which most lawyers would focus on. You know, the right to counsel, the right to remain silent, the right to know the case against you. Uh, and as part of that transparency process, there would be discovery or disclosure. If you don't know that, and that can relate to civil and criminal action, if you don't know that, then um, you're, you're, you're fighting in the dark and your energy is diffuse and unfocused. You don't really know what's going on. And of course that must feed into the dignity and to the autonomy of the individual. Um, and that's a critical aspect to, um, you know, that knowledge is power uh, situation. Interestingly, off to one side of that, I guess, or on the other end of the continuum, is the, the, the right to have private thoughts, the right to live in a home that you're not going to be invaded and have police searched all the time, to, um, you know, to have that level of, of autonomy and privacy, which isn't transparent and, and on an, indi in an indi individual's um, experience of life it should be as well. You know, that's, that's a critical aspect of dignity, it's an element. Um, but when uh, we engage in processes with um, corporate government enforcement agencies, where the autonomy of the individual and the privacy of the individual has been uh, tackled, then of course the transparency is critical to um, bringing clarity, bringing uh, dignity to a process. Um, otherwise we are going to have, we're in Spain, the Spanish Inquisition, we're going to have arbitrary power exercised against individuals uh, based on right is might, um, you know, might is right, um, and the law of the jungle, as opposed to uh, processes that have embedded dignity within them, which is knowing the case against you, knowing what's going on, why, you know, why is this company, or in the maritime sector, why are these ships polluting in the way that they do, why are they able to uh, privately fund and, and, and ensure when other groups can't, you know, there's all sorts of issues there. So uh, with that transparency comes, I hate the word empowerment, <laughs> but, but comes power to the individuals and to, to the autonomy to exercise you know, some of the rights that we would expect as citizens of the world. So, there with our message to the world, transparency is indispensable to the creation of dignity. Yes. Yeah, thank you.